The Common Ground World competition happening on November 12, 2024 will feature the Magic Ring meta. The craft requirements for Magic Ring are 2 gold, 2 sterling silver, and 1 mystic matter. It is crafted in a jewelry crafting table with the fastest craft time of 180 seconds and stored in the jewelry store. For this competition, Magic Ring will give 25,000 stars for each one sold. The trade time for this competition is 80 seconds with 1 gasoline cost per trade. The starting layout provided for this competition is a desert biome facing east with two rivers, one on the north side and one on the west side and a mountain on the south side. You start with everything you need to craft gold which is great because that's exactly what you want to craft and sell to get all the cash you need for this competition. You also have an oil seep on the west side and a water pump connected to the river. The cash boosts for this competition are gold from 4800 to 14,640, silver from 1800 to 5000, and copper from 1860 to 5580. Magic Ring has a cash nerf, so instead of giving 52,400 cash, it will only give 20,000 for each one sold. The rewards for this competition are the standard gala rewards for reaching the top 1200 placements in the leaderboard by the time the competition ends. Rewards are usually distributed directly to your account within 5 days. This is the no NFT required design I created for Magic Ring, so it is showing 64 Magic Ring per hour but the real rate is actually 63 per hour as you can see honey is at 63.3 per hour that means i am making about 63 glue the only reason it's showing 64 for mystic matter and magic ring is probably because i have some extra glue in my storehouse before i reset the production monitor with that being said the correct rate is 63 per hour however this does have the potential to do 65 per hour if you were to perfectly balance the honey and honeycomb which may be possible to do by rotating some of the beehives i did not bother rotating them i left them as is i believe they all are facing north that means the beekeepers are entering through the north side of the beehive but you can rotate them and it may potentially mess your honey and honeycomb rate whether in a good way or in a bad way who knows it's just something you're gonna have to test now i am gonna scroll through the production monitors so you can see the production rates of everything and all of these ceramic bowls being crafted here which is 131 per hour are being used for the honey and honeycomb if you were to craft more ceramic bowls you would of course make more honey and honeycomb however you are going to need more lumber because this is also limited by the amount of lumber it makes with the current design yes it is overproducing lumber but if you were to add another pottery shop to make more ceramic bowls and then make more honey and honeycomb you would be running out of lumber after that so you would first need to increase lumber production before increasing the ceramic bowl rates or else you will probably run into some issues with the production there now i'm going to explain the entire crafting process starting with lumber because it's a very important craft for this design lumber is being used for limestone cotton yarn honey and honeycomb honeycomb actually uses two lumber so in total for every magic ring you make you need to be using five lumber in addition to that you are also using wood for copper silver and gold in this design so a lot of wood is being used so i have 13 logger houses in charge of collecting wood from these 26 tree farms all of which are on a green craft timer and they all have the passive water that they need from the two rivers notice that no ponds are being used to supply passive water to the crops i do obviously have ponds but those are for the water pump since it is required now i have three lumber mills right here crafting lumber of course they do have the passive energy from the nearby nuclear power as well as passive water drums from the nearby water pumps and that lumber gets stored in the one lumber yard right here to be picked up by the mine workers the weavers at the fabric plant and the beekeepers to take to the beehives now i'm going to explain the crafts that require lumber starting with limestone first of all this requires water drums i have two water facilities crafting water drums taking them to the closest warehouse 
warehouse, which is these two. I have a total of five warehouses. The reason why there's so many warehouses is because there's a lot of different items that go into the warehouse for this design. I believe it's nine or 10 different items, but this way you can always store up to 10 of an item and then sell it if you have any more than that. So none of your warehouses jam up. Yeah, you could probably get away with only having four warehouses, but I played it safe and just put five warehouses on this design. And I have two power plants that are supplying the passive energy to these two iron mines making limestone, which of course are connected to the mountain. For cotton yarn, I have two tractors in charge of picking up cotton from the three cotton fields over here on the northwest corner and taking it to the one silo right here, which the three fabric plants are facing so that they can quickly pick up the cotton and craft cotton yarn. All three of these fabric plants have passive energy. These two are getting passive energy from this power plant. This one's getting passive energy from the nuclear power. Now, one thing I want to mention about the cotton fields, I have them here because this limits my cotton rate to 375, actually 380 per hour, which limits my cotton yarn rate to 76 per hour. You could have the cotton fields closer over here here which was how I originally had them but this would have you make 400 cotton per hour which would then have you make 80 cotton yarn per hour you would think that's a good thing but you're actually wasting more lumber on cotton yarn and trust me every little bit of lumber counts maybe not so much on the current design right now since it is overproducing lumber but if you don't need to waste lumber on extra cotton yarn you probably shouldn't do so now i'll explain mystic matter which has a lot of steps which involve honey and honeycomb so i'm going to start off with the pottery shops i have seven pottery shops all crafting ceramic bowls on a green craft timer pottery shops are negatively impacted by dirty so you don't want to have them close to forges or foundries or even power plants but they do want to passive energy so this is accomplished by building a nuclear power which provides up to four passive energy so that's how all these pottery shops have the passive energy that they need without having any dirty cassette on them they also have the passive water drum from the nearby water pumps and they only need to pick up two clay lumps now the pottery shop workers can pick up clay lumps from the warehouse or if there's not any in the warehouse they will pick them up directly from the clay field so you don't need a forklift for the pottery shops however you will need a forklift for the wizards workshops which i'll get to in a moment so i have six beekeeper houses beekeeper houses only cast one shade that's why i have them closer to the trees right here they're not actually Actually casting shade on those and I have six beehives all on a green crowd timer since there's no dirty impacting these spots right here two of them are crafting honey four of them are crafting honeycomb since honeycomb has twice as long of a craft time compared to honey I have 16 clover fields which the bees go to in order to collect nectar from and there's one pantry in charge of storing the honey and the honeycomb so there is one forklift that is is going to be picking up the clay lumps from the clay fields and taking them to the closest warehouse and that's because the wizard's workshop crafting glue requires two clay lumps and the worker does not know how to pick them up directly from the clay field and needs to pick them up from the warehouse so there's a total of seven wizards workshops in this design and i need to explain why i'm only using some of them of the seven three of them are supposed to craft glue four of them are supposed to craft mystic matter i only have two of them crafting glue and two of them crafting mystic matter the reason for this is because the full set of enchanted fireworks nfts are actually reducing the craft time of all my wizards workshop crafts by 50% which is a huge benefit. I have no way of turning this NFT off, so it is providing an unfair advantage to the production rates. And in order to make up for that, I have more Wizards Workshops. So if I didn't have those NFTs, this should be just enough Wizards Workshops to craft the correct amount of glue and mystic matter. So you would think I would be using four Wizards Workshops to craft glue, but that's not the case. I tried with 
just one. I was just shy of the 63 magic rings or the 63 glue per hour that I would need to make for the magic rings. So I ended up crafting an extra one. But if you don't have the full set of enchanted fireworks and FTs, then running three wizard workshops crafting glue will get you all of the glue that you need. And I am pretty sure that running four wizards workshops crafting mystic matter will get you all of the mystic matter that you need. But of course, if you for some reason have a full set of enchanted fireworks, you only need two of them crafting glue and two of them crafting mystic matter. So that would save you some space and cash. And now I'll explain the magic ring, which involves the jewelry side of this design. I have three panner bunk houses. These come with two panner workers, but cast two shade, two regular panner houses. These come with one worker, but only cast one shade. That's why I have them closer to the tree farms and the panning sites. Five copper panning sites, five silver panning sites, and six gold panning sites. I have two or storages. 10 forges in total. These four are crafting copper, these two are crafting silver, and the other four are crafting gold. I have three foundries making sterling silver. These foundries do not need a road and they also provide a craft time reduction to the nearby forges. That's why it's convenient to have them placed like I have them right here. The foundries also cast three dirty whereas the forges cast too dirty so they are far enough away from the pottery shops and the jewelry crafting table so they're not casting any dirty on those and the same goes for the beehives over here i have five jewelry crafting tables in charge of crafting magic rings notice how i have six of them in this design you don't actually need to use the sixth one Actually, originally I had seven of them. The only reason you would need to use the sixth one is if you improved the production rates of your ceramic bowls, which in turn improves the production rate of your honey, honeycomb, and if you improve the production rate of your lumber. Basically, if you got it to a point where you can make somewhere between 70 or 75 magic rings per hour, that's when you would need to turn or build and turn the sixth jewelry crafting table on. But in the visualizer that I'll show you I don't actually have the sixth jewelry crafting table since it's not required for this design that I'm showing you right here and of course I have one jewelry store to store the magic ring in for the gasoline setup I have two power plants two water pumps the refinery in between them crafting gasoline and the refinery to the side crafting petroleum I have the oil sea providing passive crude oil to the refinery crafting petroleum as well as the power plants in case you do need to make energy with these but of course in the end you don't want to be making any energy everything here is full passive energy so you want to make sure to turn all your power plants off and also turn off the nuclear power and of course i have one fuel storage right here for the trade setup on the northeast side i have two trade depots since the craft time is very high you do need to have two of them running almost constantly but the build is balanced enough where you're not going to have any of your storages jammed and that's also a reason why i have so many warehouses just in case that were to happen now, of course, if you have the Express Depot NFT, then you would only need to use that one. And optional spots, you could have a builder house right here, another one right there, and another one right there. There's also an empty spot here, and this spot would be empty if you decided to only build the five jewelry crafting tables that you need. So there are extra spaces that you can work with, as well as the potential to move buildings around to further increase the production rate. I will say that there was another design idea. I did get this built to 67 per hour without NFTs. That version is going to be shown only to the supporters. And if you were to also use a common ground town hall to increase the wood production rate, because that reduces the craft time of your tree farms, you could push it to 70 per hour easily. Here is what the auto sell looks like. I have all of the items at an auto sell quantity of 10. Honey and honeycomb, I do have those at 12. And the ores, I do have those at 15. I don't have wood or petroleum on auto sell. You shouldn't be overproducing petroleum the way I have the fuel storage set up. But I would recommend putting those on auto sell just in case. The only reason you would be selling wood is if you are overproducing it. And that means 
means that you probably need a fourth lumber mill or an NFT to reduce the craft time of a lumber because you should not be overproducing wood. There is no need to. Instead, you should overproduce lumber. Here's what the build looks like on the visualizer. Total cost is 35 million. This doesn't include the cost of the steel mill in order to craft the steel required for nuclear power. So really, you're gonna wanna have 37 million, probably more than that because of the very high wages. The wages are at 41,000 per minute approximately. Now this build is cash positive. The reason for that is because gold is being overproduced. That is why I have the fourth forge crafting gold. You actually only need three forges crafting gold to reach the production rates. But if you only have three forges crafting gold, you will be cash negative. You won't be selling enough gold to pay all of the wages so that's why that fourth forge crafting gold is very important for that you can find the file for this visualizer on my discord server and an invite link to the discord is in the description this design is expensive however the cash boost to gold is a massive help if you were to run a full gold rush with the entire town you could easily make 18 mil cash per hour which you really shouldn't need to because you would be making too much cash you'd probably win be able to build fast enough to use up all that cash so maybe you want to run like half the town making gold probably get it to a point where you can sell enough gold to make nine mil cash per hour or something and on the other half you start building out some of the stuff that you need like maybe this section with the nuclear power and the pottery shops and then eventually you'd uh, change this all up to the final design basically and the only reason you would be cash negative in your final design is if you're not overproducing gold so you do want to make sure to overproduce gold like i mentioned earlier there is definitely room for improvement the only hint i'll really give you is that you do need another pottery shop it doesn't have to be a green craft timer whether it is or not really depends on if you can improve the lumber production and you might require nfts in order to do that at minimum the common ground town hall is a huge help since it provides a craft time reduction to the tree farms hence it would increase your wood and lumber production but that's all i have for this design if you found this helpful or informative please leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing if you haven't done so i did realize that i didn't turn on my lights so it's a little bit darker than usual but that's not a big deal uh if you want to help support the channel you can find links in the description on how to support and as always i appreciate your support and thank you for watching